Eric Sundergaard with Armstrong. I'm the Architectural Specialties Installation Manager. Today we're going to talk about wood wall panels with the Z-Bar system. So the wood wall panels actually come in 2x4, 2x8, 2x9, 2x10 sizes. They are attached with Z-clips on the back side of the panel. The number of Z-clips per panel will depend on the size of the panel. So if you have a 2x4 panel, you'll need four hooks. If you have a two by eight panel, you will need eight hooks. Approximately two inches in from the end of the panel is your clip location. Try to avoid the perfs in the panel if you do have perforations in your panel. On the wall is where we have the Z bar. So the Z bar will run coast to coast on the wall. I sprayed black on the plywood first, just so it would show through the reveals the black and didn't have to do anything else to it. Also, running the Z-Bar continuous and just in the reveal, spraying the Z-Bar black will help out for installation and actually the support. Because if you think a lot of times your stud spacing will be 16 inches on center, and if you have your stud spacing doesn't work out where, where your reveal is, the end of your Z-Bar will not be will not have a solid attachment. So this is good because you're running a continuous, anchoring it to the, to the studs or to a plywood surface, and then just taking black spray paint to go over where your reveals will be so your Z-bar can stay continuous. So one more thing to consider is making sure your wall is plumb. So you may have to shim your Z-bars. Um, if you do have to shim your Z-bars to bring it out so your wall can be consistently plumb, just use a horseshoe shim. Loosen the screw, drop the horseshoe shim between the Z-bar and the wall, and then just tighten up the screw. You know, either you're gonna end up using a 16th inch, an eighth inch, or a quarter inch. Figure out what combination you need to get your Z-bar flush. So these Armstrong Z-clips and Z-bar system has a 5 8 of an inch liftoff. And when I say that, that means from this part of the clip all the way to the tip is 5 eighths of an inch. So let's think of this as the Z bar on the wall. When it's totally fully engaged on that clip, in order to release that panel, you have to lift that panel up 5 eighths of an inch in order for it to release from the Z bar on the wall. So once you have your Z clips already laid out on the back of the panel, now you want to establish where your Z bars are going to go on the wall. That's pretty easily done by making a story pole. Uh, but first thing I want to do is I'm going to actually put in some extra clips here, Z clips that are going to represent the Z bar on the wall for my measurement location. And then when I go ahead and I create an actual story pole out of, piece of, out of a piece of wood, I want to create my reveals, which in this project I'm going to use a quarter inch reveal from panel to panel. And that's going to indicate where marking where all the bottom of the Z bar is going to be. So once you have this story pole set up, then you want to find the high spot in your floor and then you can start your measurements with a laser level. And once you get the laser level all set up, you can set this up in the high spot of the floor, mark it where the laser hits the actual story pole. Now transfer that story pole all around that room with that same laser line and all your lines will be perfectly level and established for your Z-bar locations. So now it's time to install the panels. I have a staggered layout in here, so it's showing like a brick pattern. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be a cut panel that I'm putting up first here. And basically, just by resting it up against the wall and lowering it down, grabbing hold of it and seating the panel all the way on to the Z-bar. And then you can always take a hammer and tap it here and there if you need to, to tweak it to get it looking good. And then we go to the next panel. Just gonna take this next panel up, put it over, ready to seat it. And then I'm just gonna take a quarter inch shim because I'd like to eliminate as much movement as I can once I seat the panel. All right, so we have a couple trim options for a finished molding to trim off the side of this mock-up. Now, our one finished molding has a three-quarter of an inch depth, which doesn't quite cover 
this full install with the Z-Bar and Z-Clip installation. The Z-Bar Z-Clip, when it's fully engaged, is a full quarter inch thick. Okay, so you have three quarters plus the quarter inch. But we do have a bigger finish molding that actually covers up to an inch and five eighths of an inch. So once you, once you figure out your, de your depth, which this is exactly one inch here, so you can take this finish molding and run it on the table saw to give you that exactly one inch. So then when you install it, it works out for your system. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're installing this, this needs to be attached to the substrate. Cannot be attached to the panel at all. And when you're installing this, you wanna make sure you are gonna provide a little bit of an expansion gap in there. So when this wood panel grows and shrinks a little bit due to humidity levels, you wanna make sure you have the room in there for that to happen so it doesn't start pushing out your trims. All right, so I'd like to talk about outside corners. This is just kind of a trying to replicate an outside corner. Unfortunately, this is horizontal instead of vertical, but you could have um, horizontal corners as well. We do have a way to fin finish these off. And basically you'd be taking, I have two different styles, either I have aluminum or plastic. This is actually the piece that you would need attached to the substrate that would receive your wooden outside corner. So when this attaches, it actually is gonna attach to the actual substrate material and then your wood panels will come up to it, still leaving a little bit of a gap, you know, for expansion and contraction. And then when you're all done, you'd be taking this outside corner and, and usually taking a rubber mallet or trying to push it on to get it over the corner. So the two type of corners that we have, we talked before, uh, we have it in aluminum and plastic. I would recommend the aluminum, if you're going like up to eight feet in height, anything taller than that, uh, the plastic would work fine as well. Uh, the wood does lock onto the plastic a lot easier. Uh, I would say the main reason I was avoiding the plastic on the lower eight feet is just due to impact resistance. If you run into it with a cart, you have a less chance of this breaking compared to this. So if you want to finish off any of your exposed ends, we also have a veneer tape option. This isn't the, the same color as the panel, but it's a PVC tape. The back is very sticky. First thing I would recommend is taking wood glue and smearing it over the cut end and letting it dry before you apply this. Um, if you have different color Sharpie markers, since this is a letter grain, maybe if you want to find a, a, a light tan Sharpie marker, you may want to run it along the cut edge here before you put the edge banding up. Just helps hide that cut on that seam once you apply the veneer. You can actually just take this edge banding to cap off the end. And then they actually, we have tools you can purchase as well to actually slide down the side to trim it off nicely, or actually you can cut it with your snips to length. And like any of the Armstrong veneered wood products, we also have touch-up kits available, which will have in there a stain marker and a wax stick. Um, so we have infill options for this as well. You can of course use, always use the bagged fiberglass since you won't be seeing it through none of the perforations, so you, since you will have a fleece on the backside. Or you can use for a higher NRC, you can always use a bioacoustical infill pad as well. Once again, it's a Woodworks product. Wood expands and contracts with humidity changing, so we always recommend you have a hygrometer on the job site that will record your humidity levels and your temperature levels to make sure it falls within our, our warranty requirements. If you do not, it, the wood can move, it can grow, it can shrink, it can disengage and fall from the ceiling or fall off the wall. So this is actually a meter that records it however often you want to every 30 minutes, but nights and weekends is when everything majorly changes. And this has to stay climatized within 25 to 55% relative humidity for the life of the install. Thank you for watching this video. To learn more about Woodworks products from Armstrong, please visit armstrongceilings.com forward slash woodworks.